today's video, we're going to dive deep into the evolving weather pattern, focusing on a powerful coastal system developing along the east coast. Current model guidance reveals a series of dynamic storm systems taking shape in the coming days. On top of that, models continue to indicate periodic surges of colder air. Although this isn't a fully sustained cold pattern, it fluctuates back and forth compared to what we've recently experienced. So yes, a noticeable cooldown is ahead, but this is not the most extreme cold setup imaginable, and I want to make that absolutely clear. Let's jump into it. We'll start by analyzing current conditions associated with this ongoing coastal storm. As we can already see, a widespread shield of precipitation is impacting South Carolina and North Carolina, and this moisture will rapidly expand into Virginia later this evening. The low pressure center remains well offshore, but it's about to take a very intriguing turn, one that we'll see more clearly on the model shortly. Instead of tracking straight up the coastline as we initially anticipated, the system will drift northward briefly before stalling. Then, a secondary low-pressure center will develop farther north, effectively stealing energy from the original low. This energy transfer will shift the system's primary focus northward. While southern and northern regions will still feel significant effects, the transition zone in between will likely experience reduced impacts compared to earlier projections. This doesn't mean the storm won't be impactful, it certainly will, but the energy transfer process will slightly diminish its intensity in that middle corridor. Now let's break this down using model guidance. This is the 0Z model run, and moving it forward to the afternoon time frame, we can already see a 998 MB low pressure system, very close to present conditions. Moisture continues streaming into Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Advancing a few more hours, we see the beginnings of that energy transfer. The original low remains near the Carolinas, but new circulation develops to the north near the mid-Atlantic, signaling that the northern system is beginning to strengthen and dominate. By 8 a.m. Sunday, we also notice increased storm activity across the western U.S. with scattered showers across the northwest, precipitation in the Four Corners region, and even early season snowfall in the higher elevations of the Rockies. The jet stream dips into a trough in the west, rises over the central U.S. in a ridge, and dips again over the east, reinforcing the stormy coastal setup. By Sunday afternoon, the energy transfer continues and a large storm system develops over the central states, while persistent precipitation dominates the west coast. Moving into Monday, October 13th, the southern low still appears dominant, but impacts intensify across the northeast and mid-Atlantic. Heavy rainfall and gusty winds become widespread. However, notice that the corridor between the two lows appears drier, missing out on the worst impacts. At least in this model run, the GFS model currently suggests a bit more activity in that zone, so we'll be watching that closely. By Tuesday afternoon, all coastal lows shift offshore, while the west remains highly active, with persistent rainfall and mountain snowfall across the Rockies and Sierra Nevada. Let's continue toward Wednesday the 15th. As we progress into this time frame, the overall pattern holds steady. The Rockies and surrounding regions remain highly active, consistently influenced by recurring storm systems. The jet stream configuration is fascinating. A pronounced trough in the west, a strong ridge over the central U.S. and another trough re-establishing over the east. This setup promotes cooler air across the eastern states during this period. Advancing into Thursday afternoon, October 16th, the jet stream amplifies with ridging across the central states and troughing on both coasts. This results in widespread precipitation from the Rockies northeastward into the upper Midwest and the north central U.S., fueled by a pair of interacting low-pressure systems. By Friday, much of that energy lifts northward while a cold front sweeps across the plains and Midwest, triggering scattered thunderstorms and heavier showers. The Pacific Northwest remains unsettled under persistent storm activity, and that trend shows no sign of slowing down. On Saturday the 18th, a new low-pressure system develops over the central states, with showers and thunderstorms building to its east. Snowfall opportunities persist across the Rockies, extending into the weekend as early-season winter energy continues to funnel in. 
Looking ahead to Sunday, October 19th, we see a 991 MB low developing near Wisconsin with another secondary low over Mississippi. These systems combine to create a messy frontal setup featuring a strong cold front draped across the central U.S. and a warm front lifting northward. This means warmer, more humid air surges in from the south, especially according to this model run though it's still over a week out, so details remain subject to adjustment. Meanwhile, the Northwest continues its stormy streak with ongoing mountain snowfall. By Monday the 20th, the East Coast once again becomes stormy, driven by a powerful low spinning between Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes. This is a robust system, delivering widespread heavy precipitation. At the same time, a ridge builds into the western U.S., allowing a trough to dig into the central states, while another ridge forms in the southeast. By Tuesday, this trough shifts eastward, and the jet stream carves out a deep dip across the central U.S., with a dominant ridge in the western states. A southeast ridge lingers, maintaining milder conditions there, but the Midwest, Plains, and Great Lakes turn sharply colder well below seasonal averages. This marks a dramatic shift, a 1520 to GF drop from recent warmth, which will feel much more intense than the numbers suggest. Wednesday the 22nd looks quieter, though lingering low pressure near the Great Lakes keeps cooler air funneling south. Similar conditions persist through Thursday the 23rd and Friday the 24th, before the model run concludes with a strong ridge dominating the west and central U.S., forcing colder air to reload across the east. Precipitation Outlook Total precipitation trends slightly lower than earlier model runs suggested, Coastal regions in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina now show lower impacts, especially in that energy transfer zone we discussed earlier. The Midwest, Great Lakes, and Plains have also backed off slightly from previous precipitation totals. Meanwhile, the West continues to dominate, showing impressively strong activity moving forward. Anomaly map. Western U.S., above average precipitation, green anomalies dominate. North Central U.S., near normal overall. South Central and Southeast, notably drier than average, a growing concern. Snowfall outlook. Light accumulations in parts of Minnesota and the interior Northeast Mountains. Significant snow continues building in the western high terrain, especially the Rockies and Sierra Nevada. Temperature pattern. The European model shows brief cooling in the east, followed by a strong cool pattern out west, which explains the snowfall there. A backdoor cold front slides in around the 18th, 19th, delivering modest cooling to the northeast from an unusual east-to-west direction. After the 20th, a more widespread cool-down takes over nationwide, ending the persistent above-normal warmth we've had for weeks. By the end of the model run, temperatures warm again slightly, but that period is far out and should be viewed cautiously. European versus GFS models show stronger and more frequent cold blasts. European model still shows repeated cooldowns, but less extreme. Both agree more frequent cold shots are coming, a big change from recent patterns. Thank you guys. See you next video.